Another bit of advice I might offer deals with the body of the paper or those paragraphs in the middle of the paper where you actually tell your narrative, right? So I want to look at those same documents we did look at in the previous video I just showed you. Once again, to remind you, if you did not watch it, um, if this stuff is located in the paper one stuff file, which is in the week two lessons folder. Um, when you get to the week two lessons folder, just scroll down to the paper one stuff folder. Um, and we are looking at the document paper one opening and thesis and also the sample student essay. But first of all, the checklist that's on paper one opening and thesis document. Um, so last time we talked about the introduction and the thesis statement, but if you scroll down further on that, the body of the paper, um, the checklist also has some advice about the body of the paper. It should be made up of your descriptive narrative of your own personal experience, you need to retell an event or perhaps two, at the very most, three events that illustrates the truth of the argument that you provide in your thesis, right? So you're telling a story, but you're doing more than that. And the second bit of advice in this paper, I'm arguing that, in other words, the narrative is evidence for the argument you are making. The narrative is very important, but in it itself, it's not enough. Right? You need to make clear why your narrative proves the point you're arguing. As you go through the process of telling your story, you should make clear what the story means. And while I think a lot of you had really interesting stories to tell, the idea of, of telling what your story means or what it illustrates was less clear through the course of the body of your papers in a general way. So that's something you guys can work on. right? Uh, making clear not just the narrative of the story, but what each paragraph or what each episode of your narrative shows. Because sometimes reading your drafts, um, I enjoyed reading the narrative, but I got a little lost about what particular incidents might have to do with the main idea that you're trying to convey. Okay. Also, just to point out some things not to do in the body of the paper, you are not summarizing or even analyzing the article in question, right? Um, I had to make this point to a few people who I think misunderstood the assignment who were trying to analyze the article from the reader. That's not something we're doing in this draft. That'll be next draft. Um, the other thing is you need specific life experiences. I think a few of you were maybe telling probably too many events that are sort of loosely related but don't necessarily work to prove the thesis. So once again, you probably want to confine it to as few um, episodes as you possibly can. And you want to tell those few episodes in more detail and explain them with um, more clarity than you may be doing right now. So if you're worried about the length of the paper, you don't expand it by just throwing another event that's not really related to your thesis into it tell the events that you have in more detail and make more clear what they mean, okay? So that's the basis or the things you'd go over for this paper. And once again, if we go back to that sample paper and look at what this student has done, um, first of all, he is telling a story. He begins this paragraph, though, with a kind of topic sentence. The process a realization starts with a spark of spontaneity. That spark brings to life the burning desire in all, us, all of us to try new things. So we make clear that this paragraph is going to be a paragraph about trying new things and about how that has to do with spontaneity, right? So we have some idea what the paragraph is going to be about. Then he tells his story. About six months ago, uh, that spark caught fire. In general, I consider myself an exceptional fisherman. I started at a young age and grew to love every aspect of it. These days, I normally fish in lakes and ponds with the occasional trip to the ocean. Many people, myself included, fish in these locations because there's not a whole lot of effort required. Now, this is going to be important. What he's sort of trying to do here is not just telling the story, but laying the groundwork for the point he's trying to tell. So open at the very beginning of the paragraph, he's going to suggest that this is sort of a simple thing to do, 
But if you remember the thesis that he's trying to prove, he's, he's talking about how exploring boundaries rather than being simple leads him to a process of self-realization. So he's beginning by uh, explaining that this is a really, for him, fishing's generally a simple process, right? And he goes on to say, um, find a promising fishing spot, cast your line and take in the scenery while waiting for a hungry bass or catfish to come along and take the bait. It sounds boring, but I love it, right? He's mastered it. And then he says, if I were to follow Thoreau's advice, I would continue to fish this way without branching out into other methods of fishing. So he's not just telling the story in this paragraph along the way of telling his story. He is also pointing out what this narrative has to do with the thesis that he's trying to prove. OK, um, so he goes through a story of how um, he almost gets swept down the river uh, and it's kind of difficult um, I'll let you read it on your own. Um, but again, after telling the story, he explains to us, I will never forget that cold day in February. Not only I will remember it because it was a traumatic experience, but it also taught me a lesson. Looking back on that event, I realized how complex it was. I should have accounted for the depth and speed of the current. However, through that experience, I pushed my boundaries. And despite my unpleasant plunge in the stream of fly fishing, I eventually found my footing. Right. So he's trying to argue here how important the complexity of the event is and how important it was for him to make mistakes. Without making that mistake, I would not approach fly fishing cautiously as I do today, and I would not have acquired the basic fly fishing skills I now possess. What I'm trying to underline for you here is that the body of your paper is not just the narrative portion, but it's also a lot of this information which you need to underscore and remind the reader exactly how connected um, your paper is uh, to the argument you're trying to prove. You're telling the story, but the story itself is trying to build an argument, right? You think about it this way, through the body of your paper, you have positions and arguments you're trying to prove, and the narrative itself is the evidence for that argument. So what I really want you to work on in this final revision is linking that basic um, argument that you're making in each paragraph in a specific way to the narrative that you're trying to prove. So that as I read your paragraphs, I want this kind of information. Without making that mistake, I would not pos I could not approach fly fishing cautiously as I do today, and I would not have acquired the basic skills. I expanded my horizons and failed miserably in an objective sense, but that failure in itself was a success. So he's not just telling us the episode of fly fishing, uh, which I skipped over. He's also sort of dealing with the implications of that. And he's not waiting importantly till his conclusion to discuss or talk about it, okay? So I think that that is really important. In other words, your body of the paper that you're writing here isn't just a narrative in and of itself. It's a narrative that's trying to prove that point. And you have to continually, through each and every paragraph that you're dealing with through the body of the paper, remind the reader what it is you're trying to prove. Because if you can't do that or you don't do that, it's not really a successful argument that you're making here. Okay. All right, so I would go back and look at this draft, which I think is, or not this draft, but this student uh, sample essay that is in the Paper One Stuff folder with that in mind, because I do think it does a good job of not just using evidence from the narrative, but explaining how that narrative is related to the overall argument the student is trying to tell there. Okay.